channel if you're watching for the very first time hello my name is Stacia I go by namaste on Instagram so if you're interested in following me to keep up with what's happening in my life as well as to see a glimpse into my life in Japan definitely go ahead and follow me over there okay so as you can see by the title of this video we're going to be discussing 10 reasons why teaching in Japan might not be for you. So grab a snack and come on back, girl. I sounded like Wendy Williams just now. Why? Anyways, so grab a snack and come and let's see if, you know, at the end of this video, you still want to be teaching in Japan. If you know someone who is interested in teaching here, let them watch this video by sharing. Sharing is caring, girl. Share this video and let's see if we can get this family to 500 subscribers by the end of the month. So please, please, please share on Instagram, your Instagram stories. Uh, Facebook is also wonderful. WhatsApp, share with a friend. Don't be stingy and let's help each other. So I give you the information and you help me with the subscribers as well. Also, if you are a teacher in Japan and there's something that I might have missed out, you can definitely drop it in the comments bar below so that it can be helpful to persons who are thinking about transitioning from wherever they're coming from to Japan and all that good stuff. So in the meantime, guys, let's get into so a small little backtrack before we get into the video. So I've been a teacher. I, I was a teacher for three years in Jamaica, taught for three years at the high school level in Jamaica. So when I came here, I had um, the prerequisites of what it took to be a teacher. And I want to say that being a teacher in your home country, outside of Japan, outside of Asia, being an ALT in this country is significantly different from being a teacher back home. So let's get into number one. So number one, if you're the type of person who is a control freak, meaning that you like to be in charge of your classes, you like to be in charge of disciplining students, then teaching in Japan is not for you. I'm sorry. If you're here, it means that you are an ALT, assistant language teacher, which means that your job does not entail con class control. It does not entail discipline in class. And so if you're the type of person where you feel the need to be in full control, teaching in Japan is not for you. So get that in your head when you're coming here to teach, you're not in control of anything. You're not in control of your timetables. You're not in control of the topics. You're not in control of how the topic um, the topics are arranged. You're not in control. You're working with a syllabus. You're working with, if you're working at the high school or the junior high school level, you're working with a Japanese teacher of English who tells you what to do, who will tell you what activity to plan, who will tell you when to speak, when to leave the classroom, when to come to the classroom, all of that. So for me, a lot of times the teacher will say, okay, we're going to go to the class for the full 50 or 40 minutes, however long it is. Sometimes she'll say, come to the beginning of the class and I will come to the beginning and then she'll ask me to leave midway, um, mid during the, the middle of the lesson or she will say, come to the last 20 minutes of the class. So if you're the type of person who like a rigid, structure or to be in control teaching in japan is not for you the thing i wanted to talk about is the fact that it can be very 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 boring so there are times you're going to be at work and there is nothing for you to do case and point when they have exams at school you're expected to turn up to work but you have nothing to do and I when I say nothing I mean nothing you have no sometimes you have no papers to, to be marked you have no lessons to plan and there is nothing for you to do except to sit at your table as early as 8 50 to as late as 3 20 and I know some persons who work in other programs have to stay to work till about 4 or 5 in the in the afternoon in the evening hours of the day so if it is 
that you are the type of person who is very fun and vivacious and you can't stand the boredom, then teaching in Japan might not be for you. There are going to be days when you have to turn up to work, sometimes for a whole week, sometimes two weeks, and you have zero thing to do, but you have to turn up. So if you are the type of person who that doesn't sound appealing to you, then sis, sir, you might want to unpack your luggage because it, it, it might not be for you. Number three, and this is something that I've been grappling with on and off for the past year that I've been here. Um, sometimes teaching in a Japan as an ALT can feel like you are wasting your intelligence. Um, but before we move on, let's just clarify something. I'm telling you all of these 10 things as if you were an ALT or you're coming here to be an ALT. If you're working in the uh, Aikawa system, it's it's totally different. I'm not in the Aikawa system, so I'm not in, uh, in the best position to inform you. Uh, so I'm talking from the perspective of an ALT. So back to what I was saying. So the third reason why, is it the third? Yes, it's the third. So the third reason why teaching in Japan, it might not be for you. It can feel like it's a waste of your intelligence. Now, to come to Japan to teach English, most if not all of the programs that um, recruit persons to come here to teach, they all require that you have uh, an, uh, a bachelor's degree of some sort. It doesn't have to be in English or teaching, but you have to have a degree of some sort. No. Now you're here in Japan, you have your big degree that you work so hard for. Sometimes it can feel like a waste of your intelligence because I kid you not, there are days when you go to a class and you just sit there and you perhaps you're asked to repeat six words or to read a paragraph and literally that's it for the entire day, right? And if you have four of the same grades, it means that you're doing that four times, that one activity four times. So it can feel like a, a underuse of your degree, it can feel like a waste of your time. And sometimes if you're not trying to make sure that you're maintaining a level of intelligence and a, a level of reasoning, you can feel like you're losing it. And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm the only one who thinks this way. If you're not the only one, you're in Japan and you're an ALT, let me know. But sometimes I'm like, I'm too smart for this. Like, what am I doing here? But it's easy to feel that way. And sometimes you're going to feel that way. And I have seen other YouTubers talk about, you know, feeling like they're wasting their, 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 their degree or they're wasting their intelligence because... The job doesn't require you to be critical in any way, shape, or form. It does not. And depending on the teacher that you're working and the level that you're working, it really does not require any sort of critical thinking on your part or any deep thinking on your part. So if that is something that's appealing to you, then fine. Kudos to you. Come to Japan. If that's something that bothers you, then you might want to rethink coming to Japan as an ALT. The fourth thing that I wanted to discuss is isolation and loneliness. Loneliness <laughs> taking over me when you got no baby. Now listen, if you're in a foreign country like Japan, you're English, you're an English speaker, you're whatever speaker, the point is you're not a Japanese native speaker. And your Japanese is as limited as mine is, you are going to feel isolated and lonely. And I'm at a school, and I'm pretty sure this is the case for most a ALTs. You are 99.99% the only foreigner, the only non-Japanese person in the room. So imagine being in the room, you don't know what's going on. People are talking, laughing, you don't know what's going on. Sometimes you're in the staff room there, and you're just, you know, hanging out, whatever. And you just see people start standing up and talking. A meeting is happening. No one told you. You don't know what's being said in the meeting. But you're there. So sometimes you're going to feel lonely and isolated. Because even the English teachers, they're talking in Japanese with their colleagues, obviously. And it's so easy to feel like you don't belong. It's so easy to feel like you're left out. Because a lot of them also don't always make you feel 
a part of but you are going to have to you if you're planning on coming here if you're already in the process of making a transition of coming here or to come here just know that you are going to feel lonely you're going to feel isolated and that's not something that's going to change unless you learn Japanese and even then there still might be a level of isolation because you're only an assistant teacher there so you're not fully a teacher and so you're not fully incorporated or included in a lot of activities so be prepared for there to be an assembly in the gym no one tells you but the staff room is empty and you only hear the the principal speaking on the microphone or or something like that or last minute someone runs to the room and realize that you're not there and they come to tell you so be, be prepared for that the next thing I wanted to talk about is the kind of students that you're going to be interacting with now it's dependent on the level of students that you're dealing with that means what level of education the students are at so it's um whether it's elementary junior high or high school uh be prepared to deal with students who aren't necessarily as how do i put it without being sounding harsh they are very timid and shy so there may be times when you go to class and you're trying to communicate with students not just about the target language that's that's been covered that day but just general hi how are you questions and stuff like that now the thing with japanese people i find is that if they feel that like their english is not good then they will not make an effort to to communicate now you have some students who are very outspoken and confident there will always be that but for the most part there are students who can speak english very well and still don't make an effort to so in the japanese culture they are all about um conformity and unity right so persons going to work they dress basically the same way and um standing out in this culture is not a thing so in the western end of the world people praise standing out as opposed to fitting in in japan it's the opposite fitting in is praised um over standing out so there are students who will be shy and timid and they don't want to make a mistake they want the answer to be perfect and if it is that the answer is not perfect then it means that they'll, they'll feel some type of way about it um so it's important that you know that sometimes they're going to plan because this ha this has happened to me so i plan my nice good lesson and I go to class excited and jolly about the, the, the lesson that I have planned. And let me tell you, crickets, crickets, because I'm up there having a jolly good time. And the students are like, and like any volunteers and everybody's like, the bad language that girl, me, no, mm -mm, no, not happening. So the students are timid. They're very shy. They don't like to make mistakes and so as a result of that there might be instances where you're asking for a volunteer no one wants to volunteer you ask a question no one wants to answer and it's just you and the jte up there trying to to encourage students to go some teachers say that they'll um, pick on students i personally don't do that because if you don't want to talk i'm not forcing you to talk so be prepared for a whole lot of silence because Japanese kids, once they're on the corridor, they're all fun and jolly. Once the bell goes, they switch off. And they are sweet little angels for the most part. Unless you're at the elementary level. Well, I teach at the junior high, so that's my experience at the junior high level. Maybe it's different at the elementary level. So one of the next things that you need to be aware of before you come to Japan as an ALT, and one of the things that you want to consider if you're okay with, is learning to be flexible. You have to learn to be flexible if you want to teach in Japan. No, I say that to say that there are times when, like I've said previously, that the teacher might want to come at the beginning of the lesson, sometimes at the end of the lesson, sometimes the entire lesson. There are also times when you will be T1 or T2, and by that I mean teacher 1 is the leader of the lesson, and then T2 is the, the assistant of the lesson, assistant to the t1 teacher so if it is that you're a problem with the constant back and forth between t1 and t2 
this position might not be for you because there are times when you will have to lead a lesson um, and you have to do it by your, well, not by yourself. Sometimes you can ask for the, the JTE to help. So you are in charge of planning the activities and executing and the teacher, the JTE will assist you. And then there are times when he or she will lead the lesson and you will assist them. So be prepared for that. Also, as it relates to flexibility, there may be instances, and I know some persons have this experience, I don't. Sometimes you might be teaching at four, five, six schools a week. So at the moment, I only teach, thank God, one school, five days a week. But I do know that there are teachers who may have um, four, class, four schools a week, two schools a week. They may have two junior high schools two times or three times a week and then two elementary school for the rest of the week so you have to learn to be flexible you have to learn to you have to come with the open mind that you might not be one of those persons who only have one schools one school you might be one of those persons who have a number of schools during the week so you have to learn to be flexible learning to deal with the different teachers at each school and adjusting yourself based on the level because at the elementary school you are in complete control of the class in terms of um, you're given the topic and you can plan almost anything that you want to plan based on the topic or the target language that you're given uh, so if at the junior high school you have to work with the JTE to plan a lesson depending on the JTE she might he or she might give you free reign to to do whatever so long as it covers the topic um there are some other teachers who are more involved and so they'll ask they'll it would be more of a collaborative effort so you want to bear that in mind flexibility is key it's important if it is that you're coming here to be an alt also another thing i think this is number seven now uh so if it is that you're coming here and if it is that you are going to be teaching english you are expected to be um, very high energy. They package English here as very fun and exciting because they want to attract customers. So if you're teaching especially, and this especially goes for elementary school teachers, chances are the homeroom teacher is Japanese and does not have a very good grasp of the English language. So it is therefore your job, especially with kids at this age who are very, you know, vivacious and energetic to be high energy, if not all, most of the time. So even in training, you are expected or you're taught to maintain a certain energy level throughout the lesson. So if you're not the type of person to be, you know, partying or have an energy that is to the roof, then teaching in Japan might not be for you because the truth is... Sometimes you're like a clown at the circus and I know that might sound like an insult But that's literally the first thing that came to mind. So you might be asked or expected to to main, have and maintain a very high energy right throughout so if you're you know you're not the type of person to put on a show This is not for you. I can tell you it is not for you and um, if it is that you go there with a very low energy that further creates a, a cemetery kind of feel in the classroom because the students are already low level especially if you're teaching at high school junior high school so you have to go there pumped and ready and you they wanted to make english seem fun and exciting so you have to bear that in mind so if you know you're not the top person to be high energy anytime at all then girl stay home because they want you to be Genki, as they would say in Japanese. So if you're not that type of person, Tanayayar, stay home. Don't come here. I'm just saying, maybe you can learn to develop the attitude of being you know, energetic and all of that. But if you know in your heart of heart that you're not that type of person, you're not going to put on a show for anybody, then you might not want to come here. I'm just saying. So... This is something that I would consider to be an unpopular belief. Um, so I know that the general consensus is that Japanese kids are very respectful and um, they are model students for the most part. Now that is true in most instances, but then there are times when students are very 
what we would call in Jamaica out of order. They're very forthright. Some of them are very forthright and uh, very opinionated about certain things. And uh, some of them will be very poor English students, but they find the English words to express themselves. And um, sometimes you'll be in the classroom and a child is saying something that's inappropriate and there is nothing that's said to the child or there is nothing that's done to correct the child um, in their error. So that's something that I want you guys to be aware of. There are times that students may say or do something that's inappropriate either to you or to another student in the class. Sometimes be prepared for the Japanese teacher to say nothing, to do nothing. I've been in a class where students are grade, a grade 7 child is saying something inappropriate, not to me, but just in general, and he's repeating it over and over again. The Japanese teacher says nothing. And I'm in the corner, I'm like, am I the only one hearing what's going on? Like, am I? Am I crazy? Me go mad. And because those who who know me, like I said, I'm a, I'm a teacher. I've been a teacher. There are certain things that I don't stand for as a person, worse as a teacher. I feel like children need to know their place and to understand time, place, and context. So when I'm in the classroom and I'm not allowed to discipline and I hear a child saying something that's very sexual and very provocative, Miss Goldburn wants to come out because over here the conversation says that Miss Goldburn wants to come out because, um, excuse me, little one, um, you want to stop that right now because that's not appropriate at all, and you know it's not appropriate, right? So in Japan, there's this whole thing of not being confrontational. So persons have, I don't remember the correct term, is this a buried culture, endured culture, whereby they they ignore or they gloss over a lot of things, things that need needs addressing, but they'll gloss over it because they don't want to be confrontational. And that's part of the reason, I know I'm segueing to something else, and that's part of the reason why many persons do not like foreigners here because they consider us to be confrontational and if we have a problem because that's our culture if we have a problem with something if there's something wrong we're going to talk about it whether it's respectful or not it's going to be talked about so to come here and to hear kids say certain things and do certain things it's it's strange to me and especially not to to have it be nipped in the butt immediately right then and there I have a problem so sometimes no because I know I can't say or do anything to the child I just whip I just give them the eye so once I, w- I went to a class and students thought it was funny to to lock or to hold the door so that I couldn't enter of course I'm stronger than them so that didn't work I opened the door and I saw the, the student who did it walking off so because I know I can't say anything directed to the child I just looked at him I was like really you sure you want to try me because I'm not the one and he was walking of course I didn't say that out loud I didn't say that out loud um either way he wouldn't have, have understood what I was saying and I watched him walk away and I gave him the eye while he walked away and the farther he walked away the more i looked and the more i looked the more he was guilty he had that guilty look on his face and i was like yeah you need to be guilty because you know what you did was not fun and then when he walked over to his other friends who i'm sure bet him or dared him to do what he did i looked at all of them i was like oh so you're all involved so that's how it is and they all kind of you know in shame i guess walked off so you have to learn very cute and subtle ways to to get your point across without without you know coming across as aggressive and i'll i'll share another story 
if you got enough time, I'm sure you got enough, you got enough time, right? So I'm in a class and students are like going ballistic, like they're just noisy. And we just finished an activity where they were interviewing each other and it was just so noisy. And it's one of the classes that boys are very, very, very noisy. And I'm there wanting to speak. And by now, you know, people know who I am. Because like I said, I'm a teacher by profession. So I don't stand for certain things. And those who I have taught know that there are certain things that I just don't accept period i'm never going to be the person who is talking and a child is talking over me Mm -mm. that that's not gonna happen you're gonna be quiet you're gonna listen to me and you're going to get the chance to respond until then you're gonna be quiet i'm not going to shout over you and you're not going to shout over me nor will you speak when i speak right So the students are there and making a lot of noise. And in the middle of the sentence, I just stopped speaking. I just stopped. And um, a Japanese teacher realizes this because she's been teaching with me for some time. So she understands how I am now. She stopped. She looks at me and she says, oh, you want to speak? And I say, yes, I want to speak, but I'm not going to speak while they're speaking. And she immediately quiets the class. And then I'm able to speak like I'm willing to compromise on certain things. But when it comes down to respect, that's never going to be something up for discussion. Respect is going to be given. And I don't care who you are or what country I'm in. So that's just a little story. Um, So you have to learn how to, to give up, but also to stand up. And to stand up without being too aggressive or too forward because that is frowned upon. So you have to try to find very subtle ways of getting them to realize that I am with that bullshit. So don't try that with me. Okay, so number nine, I think we're at number nine. If you're going to come to Japan um, to teach as an LT, I I think I've kind of touched on the point in 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 previous uh in a pre in a previous point but if you're in japan you're going to have to dumb shit all the way down right down so one of the things i think i've learned and i'm learning to master while i'm here and it was something that was taught to us in during initial training um from a company simple english And when they say simple English, you're going to need the simplest of English that you can find to articulate yourself so that communication can take place. Unless this person has lived outside of Japan and has been ingratiated in a society that is filled with persons who are native speakers of native speak who are ingratiated with persons who are native English speakers, then or they've been studying English long enough, then chances are even with the teachers who are supposed to be teachers of English, you have to slow down, obviously, because English isn't their first language. It takes a little longer for them to understand and to process. Um, But two, you have to learn to dumb it down. Now, as a person who considers herself to be very verbose at times, Um, there are certain words that I understand that I can't use with them because they're not going to understand because they're still, as teachers of English, still learning the language and still learning the vocabulary that, that, um, that exists within the English language. And of course, English encompasses a lot of vocabulary, right? But even with the students, especially, you have to dumb it right down. You have to dumb it down. So you have to learn to use the simplest English that you can find, a.k.a. dumb it down, so that people can understand what you're saying. So sometimes you'll literally have to be speaking as though you're you're talking to a child who is just now learning language because for the most part, they're just learning the language. So you have to learn to dumb it down a lot of the times. And sometimes you're going to have to be prepared to exercise some patience in explaining yourself a number of times sometimes you have to get illustrate visual illustrations to draw 
so that they can understand what you are saying. So that's something that you have to be prepared for. Even the teachers of English, you have to dumb your English a lot down, especially if you are a very verbose person who uses a very erudite language. Be prepared for that. Okay, so the tenth and last thing that you have to be prepared for, you need to know in order to make a decision for you to come here is Japanese people are not direct. So if you're teaching most Japanese teaching here or you live here, you know that Japanese people are not very direct people. So you'll ask them to go out, not just not not, not your co-workers, because you're not supposed to be going out with your co-workers. But in general, if you ask someone to go out, they won't directly come out and say, no, you're not going to do that. They're going to give you the runner, oh, maybe next month. And then when next month comes, you ask them again, mm, busy. They, they're not going to say no. They're hardly ever going to say no. And they lacked directness. And that can be very frustrating. There are times when you will plan a lesson um, and they might not like an activity that you do. And instead of saying that they don't like it, they will probably create another activity or do some other shady thing. But they aren't direct and that can drive anyone who is out, if not from their culture crazy. And it does drive Japanese people crazy because I have a Japanese friend who that drives crazy. And I've spoken about this before um, in other videos. They are not direct. So they will tell you what you need to do in terms of topic and stuff like that. But there are times when you might deliver a lesson. It's not good. But you will ask them, oh, how is the lesson so-and-so sensei? And so-and-so sensei will say, oh, sugoi, amazing. It was a fun. But then when evaluation comes around or they get in contact with your company, the company will say that they, they weren't happy with the lesson so you have to be prepared for the fact that they aren't direct they won't directly say to you especially if it's something negative they won't directly say to you the lesson was poor do it differently next time they're not going to do that and they have very coy and cheeky ways of trying to relay a message so i think they speak a language of sarcasm sometimes um but that's something that you need to bear in mind. Japanese people are not very direct. So you have to learn how to read between the lines and read body language as well. And after a while, once working with them, you begin to get the gist of the character of the person that you're working with. Um, I personally tell them off the bat, listen, I don't have no time for the foolishness. Tell me if you like it or not. And... I don't worry about my feelings. Let me know so that I can improve and be a better ALT for you. Because this is a learning process for me. So let me know. Let me know. Okay, guys. So this is the end of the video. So that was the 10 things that I think you need to know before you're coming to Japan. And teaching in Japan is not for everyone. So these are some of the reasons why I think um, teaching in Japan is not for everyone. Obviously, there might be more reasons that exist. Um, if you agree or disagree with any of the reasons listed, let me know in the comments bar below and we can, you know, have a talk about it. Uh, if you have anything else you want to add to this list, you can definitely go ahead and leave that in the, in the comment bar below as well. As usual, thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in more content like this as it relates to living in Japan, uh, life in Japan, teaching in Japan and all that good stuff, definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you are interested in stuff like that in the meantime thank you so much for watching be safe be healthy i love you guys thank you so much for watching bye <laughs>